In this tutorial, what I'm going to do is go over validity and uh, reliability in uh, qualitative research. Uh, that's where I'll begin. And I just want to uh, refer you to this article. This is where I got the information uh, from. It's, uh, it has the same title, Issues of Validity and Reliability in uh, Qualitative Research. And it comes to us from uh, Evidence-Based Nursing. And uh, I've included the article so you can see it. So. Uh, let me just get to this important paragraph uh, that they uh, include in the opening. Uh, it says, concepts such as reliability, validity, and generalizability typically associated with quantitative research and alternative terminology will be compared in relation to their application to qualitative research. In addition, some of the strategies adopted by qualitative researchers to enhance the credibility of their research are outlined. And so it's really quite a good article uh, because what they're going to highlight is that quantitative research has one set of uh, criteria for validity and reliability and generalizability, while qualitative research has something, uh, something else. Um, I think that the, it's really important for us to pay attention to um, results from uh, uh, the field of nursing because they had such an impact on action research. And uh, so this, I think, is a really good summary. So let me go over uh, what it is that they have to say about uh, this, uh, this stuff. And uh, we'll take a look first at uh, uh, qualitative research. And uh, here's what they say uh, in terms of validity. Validity is about the precision in which the findings accurately reflect the data. This, again, is quantitative, and it's going to be different, of course, in, in qualitative. Uh, reliability is the consistency of the analytical procedures, including accounting for personal and research method uh, biases that may have influenced the findings. And we need to re recall that in uh, quali quantitative, and that's where we are, is in quantitative uh, research uh, that uh, subjectivity is to be avoided. Everything has to be objective. And so anytime uh, research gets in the, uh, uh, the researcher gets in the way of findings or anything else, uh, that's, uh, that's bad. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, what they have to say about alternative uh, terminology associated with the credibility of qualitative research. So Instead of uh, what, what qualitative research focuses on is truth value, okay? So when you're looking at uh, your proposal or looking at uh, qualitative research that you intend to uh, critique, uh, this is what it has to say. It says, uh, in terms of uh, uh, qualitative research, what you're looking for is truth value. Uh, and this recognizes that multiple rela realities exist. The researchers outline personal experiences and viewpoints that may have resulted in metho methodological bias, clearly and accurately presents participants' perspectives. So this is what you're looking for, and it's riddled with subjectivity. And that's okay, uh, because qualitative research thrives on subjectivity. Another thing to look for in qualitative research is consistency. So let's see what they have to say about that. Uh, this relates to trustworthiness by which the methods have been undertaken and is dependent on the researchers maintaining a decision trail. That is, the researchers' decision are clear and transparent. Ultimately, an independent researcher should be able to arrive at similar or comparable uh, findings. So this is, again, uh, how we're looking at um, uh, 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 truth value and consistency in qualitative research as opposed to validity and reliability in quantitative research. So what they're saying is that these are the, uh, the, the, the um, alternative uh, terminology. Uh, they go on uh, to say some things here about, um, sorry to on um through this, I, I'm just trying to get the, this to work. Uh, continuing with alternative uh, terminology, they have neutrality or confirmability. Again, this applies to qualitative research. It's uh, are achieved when truth value, let's see if I can uh, just move this along, sorry. Achieved with truth value, consistency and applicability have been addressed. Let me try that again. Neutrality is achieved when truth value, consistency and applicability have been addressed. Centers on knowledge, acknowledging the complexity of prolonged engagement with participants and that methods undertaken and findings are intrinsically linked to the researcher's philosophical position, experiences, and perspectives. 
uh, these should be accounted for and differentiated from participant accounts. Okay, so let me explain the what's going on here. Because qualitative research thrives on subjectivity, you're reporting the subjective experiences of your participants uh, and trying to build a theory from that or a uh, explanation of their worldview and uh, how that worldview is constructed. The researchers' own biases are going to uh, play a role in what shapes that um, worldview. Now, again, if you are doing a critical theory approach, you already have a position and you are looking for uh, certain things that are going to tip you off, to power imbalances, for example. And so it's okay for you to go in with those biases uh, because all research, uh, qualitative in particular, is, uh, is, is biased. And so you, and biases just have to be acknowledged. And, and so uh, the way that they're saying this in terms of uh, neutrality is that as long as you've been really upfront about things and that you acknowledge the complexity of a prolonged engagement with the participants, because typically you're going to become sympathetic to them or maybe you won't be sympathetic to them after, after a while. Uh, and, and that your methods uh, that you, 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 you do and your findings are linked to your own f philosophical position and your experiences and the perspective. So long as you're upfront about all this, uh, you uh, are, are doing a good job of uh, at least acknowledging neutrality in this sense. You're going to try to separate out your biases from the participants' accounts so that a researcher knows what belongs to you and what belongs to your participants. And that's uh, how uh, neutrality or confirmability are achieved. Um, it's just being really honest. Now, the next one is applicability instead of generalizability. Uh, consideration is given to whether findings can be applied to other context settings or groups. But typically, with uh, qualitative research, it's really the description of the life of the, the participants and might be uh, extended to similar situations or similar conditions. But the important thing to uh, remember is that these are not antithetical or opposed. They're just different. And maybe, for example, uh, what you're doing here is generating a theory that can then be tested by uh, what we're looking at over there uh, in quantitative research. And so quantitative research has a goal of uh, transferability of the findings to other settings and applica applicability in other contexts. Uh, so here it's just simple consideration and maybe more conjecture-based. Here it's uh, really trying to demonstrate and substantiate numerically that you can uh, transfer uh, your findings to other settings for this reason. Uh, you are uh, uh, able to um, replicate uh, the study and its findings in, in, in other contexts. All right, so let's take a look at some other things. Uh, one important question that they ask is, what strategies can qualitative researchers adopt to ensure the credibility of the study findings? And here's what they say. Uh, unlike quantitative researchers who apply statistical methods for establishing validity and reliability of research findings, qualitative researchers <clears throat> excuse me, aim to design and incorporate methodological strategies to ensure uh, trustworthiness of findings. Such strategies include, and this is from Table 2.2 of the uh, article, uh, and it's Table 2.2, uh, Strategies for Enhancing the Credibility of Qualitative Findings, uh, Truth Value, Consistency, uh, and Neutrality, and Applicability. And we just saw what those, uh, what those meant. And so one thing I would recommend that you do before I go through each one of these is to Look at your own proposals. Look at your own IRB uh, proposals too, you know, because they're closely aligned. And go through and make sure that you've accounted for each one of these things or you have a plan to account for them. And so let's look at each one. Let's look at truth value first. And again, this is in the table so you can look at it, but in the article in table two. Uh, what they say is reflexivity and reflection on one's own perspectives. That is identifying researchers' uh, biases. A uh, reflective journal main uh, maintained and, and decisions documented. So you have a really, you know, ar strong archival system that includes uh, what the participants said, uh, their peer statements, 
and uh, or or copies of them and uh, your uh, own uh, biases. You know, you could have a uh, a word document where you've set up a table and uh, you just keep uh, notes as you're going and uh, running through uh, what the participants said over here and then what you think uh, about them over here so that it's clear what's going on. Uh, peer debriefing to assist the researcher to uncover taken for granted biases or assumptions. So that means like a participant check. That's uh, what this is called, and I unfortunately can't write very easily on the screen. But this is a type of uh, of uh, participant check where you'll debrief with your uh, informants and uh, share what you're uh, what you've uh, collected and let them comment on it so that they have the opportunity to uh, you know voice any objections or opinions. Now the thing to do is maybe you're going to have like the uh, the first statement. Let me see if I can just get a, a pen working uh, working here. Uh, that what you're going to do maybe is have what they said first, and then if they say something different, you know, the second pass, you'll you'll note that too, because oftentimes people will want to correct themselves. They'll say something like, well, all those people don't work, and then, you know, after they read that, then they're going to hedge and say, well, I didn't mean to be, uh, you know, that to, to sound racist or, or biased or whatever. So you want to look and you want to see if, the you know, that was just a, a, a slip or an unconscious bias that emerged, you know, in speech, or that's how the person really feels, you know, so that's all the stuff that you're going to do. But you also have to be upfront about how you arrived at that conclusion, you know, if that's, uh, you know, important, and it, and it typically is. Uh, example, uh, the initial qualitative interviews with patients were medically focused and subsequent interviews took a more holistic uh, approach. Uh, so this, I, I, I presume, is uh, you know the type of participant check that might go on. It's sort of built in to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, research method where you are focused on the condition, uh, the symptoms, the uh, issues that the patient is facing, and then after that, you're going in to try to understand the person uh, more holistically. And um, you have to do this in a way that un reveals your biases. All right. Truth value continues. Uh, representations of the findings in relation to the phenomenon. All right. Let's take a look at what this means. Uh, describing, for example, the sample of 19 carers, carers of patients managed in a renal supportive uh, care service and willingness to share their experiences in depth. Uh, and over time enabled clarification of the findings as an ongoing process. And so uh, representation means how well you're representing whatever your findings are along with the context. And, and so this, uh, I think, is a nice revealing statement. And I'd be looking for this in your own work. Uh, here's another uh, check on truth value. Uh, and again, you see this is built in, built into the study. Semi-structured audio recorded interviews allow for repeated revisiting of the data to check for emerging themes and remain true to participants' accounts for uh, caring for patients with renal disease uh, managed without dialysis. So if we, again, are you're thinking about your chapter three, I think this is really a, a good, um, and you're doing qualitative research or a qualitative portion of mixed methods, I think that this is really a good example to, uh, to follow. And just look at how they're building in uh, and accounting for how they're going to uh, maintain truth value through representation of the findings in relation to what you're, what you're studying. So truth value uh, continues, uh, it looks like, uh, here, again, with representation of the findings uh, over time. Well, here we go. Uh, use of rich and thick verbatim extracts from caregivers, uh, carers of patients, Manage without dialysis assists the reader to make judgments about whether the final themes are true to the participants' accounts. So you're really providing rich and detailed uh, accounts and feedback that are verbatim and can be checked by, uh, by others. Uh, here's another, here's a true participant check. Participants are invited to comment on the research findings and themes. So you're going to be allowing your uh, informants, your participants, to view the items and comment on them. Now, if you're doing a, an elementary school um, setting, then you'll have to decide on how best that to, uh, you know, to manage something like that. 
you know, it's going to be easier with adults, probably, uh, but uh, it might be difficult with, um, you know, very, very young children. Although with adults, it's going to be difficult if you have things to say that they are not going to like. You know, you might reveal a truth that, that they don't want to hear. So this is not to say that it's going to be just easier with adults. The method might be easier, uh, but the findings might be, uh, you know, hard to palate. Anyway, let's look at uh, consistency and neutrality as uh, another uh, factor. Uh, for truth, uh, being able to trust uh, what the, the findings. Achieve auditability. Now, an auditability means that somebody else can go through and see how you arrived at your conclusions. Transparent and clear description of the research process from initial outline through the developments of the methods of reporting the findings. In addition, maintaining a research diary. What goes into the research diary? Documenting challenges and issues, assisting and maintaining cohesion between the study's aim, designs, and methods. So you're just telling a story, basically. That's the beauty of uh, qualitative research: is that you do get the opportunity to t tell the story of your of, of your research, um, especially in in, in 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 narrative research, for example. You might do narrative research plus ethnography plus something else, you know, plus uh, grounded theory. Who knows? Uh, people may disagree with that, but I'm saying that uh, it probably has happened out there. Uh, emerging themes discussed with the research team members who had palliative and, qual and qualitative research exp expertise in the open process where assumptions could be challenged and consensus could be reached. Well, in my opinion, this is part of the job of the committee uh, that you selected, your, your panel, uh, or your uh, readers, and what you want to do is uh, involve them in the process, perhaps. Now, you have to listen to your advisor. Uh, you might find that it's going to be more important. It'll be more important for you to share this with other experts who are in your field. Um, you know, I did my dissertation, for example, and uh, I was doing systemic functional linguistics, and there was really only a, a, you know, a couple of people who could uh, you know, read that and understand what I was what I, what I was doing, and uh, it was my committee to only a degree. So I had to reach out to uh, other experts, and they encouraged that. They were fine with that. Uh, applicability, a application of findings to other contexts with rich detail of context. The renal setting, including patients managed within the service, facilitates the evaluation of study conclusions and transferability to other. Well, this had renal units. I just put in hospital units. But uh, you can just see this coming out from their uh, work uh, or their proposal uh, in order to ensure uh, that maybe there's application of findings. Now, you can only do that probably to prove it, you know, conclusively or, or what have you. Well, whatever that means in a quantitative research, if that's possible. Uh, but at least you can describe, you know, in rich context that maybe a patient who shares characteristics with others in the, uh, the, the, the study will also have uh, some of the same issues. Uh, and that's pretty much the end of my uh, presentation on this uh, subject. And again, I really encourage you to look at this article that I will uh, include with this, uh, this video uh, so that you can, uh, you know, look at it for yourself. Thanks for watching.